Good morning, and welcome to the Wichita State University Weekly Briefing. I'm Tracy Fries, Director of Communication for Research and Economic Development. These briefings are held in an effort to keep the campus and the public better informed about the progress occurring at Wichita State. Following the briefing, there'll be a time for questions. On Wednesday, the Kansas Board of Regents approved Wichita State's fiscal year 2020 City County Mill Levy budget request. KBOR approval of this year's nearly $8.5 million budget came after an extensive review and approval process involving the WSU Board of Trustees, Wichita City Council, and Sedgwick County Board of Commissioners. These funds will mostly be spent on student scholarships and capital improvements in addition to programs and initiatives that benefit the campus and broader community. Thank you to our stakeholders for their continued belief in and support of the university and its vision and mission through the Mill Levy. A detailed breakdown of the budget is available at kansasregents.org. Also on Wednesday, KBOR approved an honorary doctorate degree on behalf of the university for Wichita State alumnus Mark Parkinson in recognition for his work for the benefit of all Kansans and for his generous support of Wichita State students. Mr. Parkinson embodies shocker excellence in his many successes in business, healthcare, philanthropy, and civic engagement, and as a role model for our students. In relation to KBOR News, the WSU Board of Trustees and Wichita State Innovation Alliance meetings will take place tomorrow, Friday, September 20, in the John Bardo Center, Room 164. The Board of Trustees will meet from 9 to 11 a.m., and WSIA will meet from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Board of Trustees at Wichita State supports the educational undertakings of the university through the management of its endowment and the 1.5 mil levy. The WSIA Board is a nonprofit organization that serves as the governing entity for Wichita State's innovation campus. The agendas can be found on their websites and both meetings are open to the public. On Wednesday, Dr. Sherry Utash, President of WSU Tech and Vice President of Workforce Development at Wichita State attended the third meeting of the American Workforce Policy Advisory Board in Washington, D.C. This prestigious board is made up of 25 members, including the CEOs of Apple, Walmart, Lockheed Martin, and other leaders from the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. Wednesday's meeting included discussions on the progress made toward the goals it set at its inaugural meeting in March, which include developing a campaign to promote multiple pathways to career success, increasing data transparency to better match American workers with American jobs, modernizing candidate recruitment and training practices, and measuring and encouraging employer-led training investments. To stay up to date with Dr. Utash's involvement on this national board, visit wsutech.edu slash American Workforce. Wichita State and the Wichita Police Department recently announced an additional partnership made possible thanks to a $750,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Justice. The grant will be used to house a certified firearms examiner and software and technology to identify ballistics at the Law Enforcement Training Center on Wichita State's Innovation Campus. This technology, known as a National Integrated Ballistic Information Network, or NIBIN machine, will allow criminal justice faculty and partners in area law enforcement to analyze shell casings by tapping into a national database. This is the only NIBIN machine in the area, and its location at Wichita State will help law enforcement link gun crimes in an expedited manner. In addition, criminal justice and forensic science students will have the opportunity to observe this analysis, giving them a valuable firsthand look at processes and technology they may use in future careers. This new partnership will benefit law enforcement, our students, and community safety. To combat an increasing national shortage for qualified nurses, Wichita State University and Kansas State University have recently joined forces. The universities have started the planning phase of a program that will give students the opportunity to earn both a Bachelor of Science degree from the College of Health and Human Sciences at K-State and a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing from WSU's College of Health Professions. Students will enroll in K-State's College of Health and Human Sciences for the first three years, and if accepted into WSU's nursing program, will be WSU students on the K-State campus for the following two years. 
On August 30, a memorandum of understanding was signed by administrators of each university to officially initiate the planning phase, which will culminate in an application to the Kansas State Board of Nursing for the satellite program. Wichita State and K-State are committed to growing the number of nursing professionals necessary to meet the healthcare needs of communities across Kansas. For more details about this partnership, check out the September 17 article at wichita.edu slash news. And a reminder that a strategic plan town hall will be held today at 3 p.m. in Hubbard Hall. Attendees will learn about the university's updated goals, which are the result of months of collaboration among the university's diverse stakeholders. And finally, information on some upcoming university events. On September 12, the Yorch Museum of Art held its fall opening. Among its fall exhibits is the 22nd Faculty Biennial, which represents the breadth of creative work and research undertaken by the School of Art, of Art Design and Creative Industries faculty. This year's exhibition, themed Teachable Moments, showcases work in art history and education, ceramics, drawing, graphic design, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture, and new media. For more information on Yulrich exhibits and events, visit yulrich.wichita.edu. Shocker Baseball's exhibition game against Nebraska is set at 2 p.m. this Saturday at X Stadium. This will be new head coach Eric Wedge's debut game and your chance to get an early preview of the 2020 Shockers. The first 2,000 fans through the gate will receive a commemorative Eric Wedge trading card. General admission is $5. Paid season ticket holders, current students, military, and first responders get in free with a valid ID. Tickets are available at goshockers.com slash tickets or by phone at 978-FANS or at the ticket office on the south side of Coke Arena. And on Sunday, head downtown from noon to 5 p.m. for Open Streets ICT. This free community building event closes down a four mile stretch of Douglas Avenue from College Hill to Delano and opens it up for biking, walking, running, and more. All are invited to join in the fun and stop at local businesses, restaurants, street vendors, and activity hubs along the way. WSU is a proud sponsor of this community building event. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Colleen Pugh, Graduate School Dean and Associate Vice President for Research and Economic Development to give a graduate school update. Good morning. So I, as many of you know, I am almost brand new. I'm coming up on the, the second month of, of my time here at Wichita State uh, University. And for that reason, I am in the both challenging and luxurious stage of getting to learn everything I can about both the graduate school and the university. So I thought what I would do today is to uh, tell you a little bit about the, the things that I find most interesting and exciting that's going on. I think some of it will be news to you, which is the point of this, but um, some of it may not be. So for example, I'd say that the, the first, uh, not surprise, but very nice aspect of my job is what an amazing staff is in uh, the graduate school. So that starts with uh, my, uh, the executive assistant to the dean, Carol McCall, who uh, keeps me in line and got me here today as well as the other members of the leadership team, Dr. Carrie Wilkes, who is the associate dean, and uh, she is in charge of academic and student affairs, as well as many other initiatives. And then Aaron Coffey, who is the assistant dean, and he's in charge of admission and enrollment management. And then Denise Gremlin, who is the director, officially official title director of graduate operations. Uh, as well as all of the other staff who then reports directly to, to the leadership team, including Sydney, who is here today. Um, so some of the things that I've been very impressed by are, of course, not uh, just the things that, that make my life easy, but the aspects of the college that are in support of graduate students. So for example, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Wilkes, in, in this last uh, couple of months, a new 
Graduate Student Council has been established. This has apparently been in the work for three years. And uh, probably in my first week on the job, I saw the, the graduate students who are the uh, executive team of the new Graduate Council going back and forth by my office. So in addition to having the executive team established, they have also set up a constitution and are now in the process of electing one representative from each graduate program. Another aspect of the support of the graduate school for, for graduate students that I've been very impressed by are the uh, professional development activities. For example, last night, Dr. Livesey, my predecessor, former dean of the graduate school and now dean of, of engineering, uh, provided a workshop on uh, writing a, a successful or, or a successful application for the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship, which is, is quite a prestigious and lucrative uh, fellowship that uh, we have had one winner in the past and an honorable mention in, in the past. So that will be followed up next week by uh, a um, workshop on writing clear, concise, and successful proposals. There's also a number of uh, career development activities on leading into the 21st century, uh, adapting to a modern workplace. So for example, there has been a, a workshop on data analysis for beginners, and that will be followed up by easy data collection using Excel to organize and understand your data. And then I think the, um, the third very impressive aspect of uh, what's going on here at the graduate level uh, for me has been the very innovative programming in, in degrees. And I think one of the best aspects of being dean of a graduate school is to be able to live vicariously through all of these different programs. Because I think all of us, the reasons why we chose our, our different careers are often uh, because one person influenced us or one class influenced us. So I get an opportunity to learn about a lot of different programs, all of which sound very interesting. For example, I just uh, rushed over here from Old Town after uh, getting to learn more about the physician assistant program in the College of Health Professions. And of course, uh, one aspect of that program that I like very much is the science aspect. I am, I'm a chemist, so that's fun. And I'm also very impressed with the number of uh, both internships and uh, employment of these students when they're finished in, in healthcare for rural and underserved populations. I, I think that's very impressive. So um, we, of course, have a lot of traditional programs, uh, 12 PhD programs, uh, some in, well, they're probably in some of the obvious ones to you, aerospace engineering, and then chemistry, of course, stands out to me, and uh, also in nursing practice and psychology and, and, and others. There are 42 master's programs, but something that's rather new to me are some of the creative, innovative programming such as in, uh, in certificates that can be stackable for, for master's programs. So there are 41 certificates currently, and I had actually already been eyeing one of them. Uh, so one that really stands out to me is Museum Studies. It's in the College of LAS, and it's joint between anthropology and history. So that's something very interesting to me because in my next life, I want to do art conservation. So that's, I think, the closest I can get to it here, and, and I'm warning uh, the faculty in those two departments that they may see me in class sometime soon. Uh, of course, higher education leadership, perhaps that's one I should be taking as well in the College of Applied Sciences. And then uh, a third one that I think is very important uh, for the university and, and for uh, the nation in general is a certificate in additive manufacturing in the College of, of Education. They, uh, it's part of a $2.5 million DOD grant for advanced manufacturing. And I, I'm sure you announced this in, in July, but also the America Makes has identified uh, WSU and NIAR as the third satellite site for uh, additive manufacturing, and in this case, particular for uh, or within the aerospace industry. 
Uh, there's 12 badges. That's also uh, relatively new to me, and that is for workforce development online um, programs where uh, it recognizes the effort that uh, people outside of the university or, or that are in um, the companies, surrounding companies, uh, can help to develop their careers. So the, the final point that I want to make is that, uh, of course, much of the emphasis at WSU is in undergraduate education. And I, I want to remind you about how important uh, graduate students are to undergraduate education. Uh, so, for example, a lot of these graduate students serve as teaching assistants, and in that case, they serve as, for example, uh, lead laboratory sections and uh, for a larger lab class, and then uh, they often also serve as uh, providing recitation sections for a larger lab class, and in that way, act as liaisons between undergraduate students and the professor. Uh, my experience has often been that, that these students uh, can help explain to the undergraduate students what I did not explain very carefully or clearly in, in my lectures, and then also feed back to the professors where they need to uh, go over the material in, in greater uh, detail. And then, of course, the third area where I think graduate students are especially important to the undergraduate students here is in the experiential learning. So all students having the opportunity to have a, um, an applied experience, often in terms of research. So for example, the Honors College uh, giving that opportunity to all uh, incoming freshmen Usually, the person that an undergraduate student will work with will be a, a graduate student. So most, um, almost as a, a mentorship in uh, collaboration with the professor. So I, like I said, I just uh, want to remind you that graduate education is, is important to the undergraduate role as, as well. And I, I thank you for having me here. It's uh, uh, been a very warm welcome, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Dr. Pugh. At this time, I'll take any questions on our updates today or any other topics. If there are no questions, we'll close out reminding you that the projects and initiatives at Wichita State are always a product of our vision to be internationally recognized as the model for applied learning and research and our mission to be an essential educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. Thank you for coming today's briefing. The next briefing will be held at 10 a.m. Thursday, September 26th.